I want to teach you very simply how to read these little urine test strips. You can buy them online and uh, they will give you some general information on what's going on inside your body just by exposing them to urine. And then these different little parts of it change different colors and you can get different ideas on what's going on. These urine test strips are not meant as a full diagnosis. They're just going to give you clues because there's a lot of other factors. But at least it'll narrow things down to kind of get you looking into a certain direction if there's something that is not normal. But I'm going to make this as simple as possible, okay? Normally these strips have like 10 different things to look at. And uh, let's just kind of go down the list. So the first one is protein. If there's excess protein in the urine, potentially there could be kidney disease or dehydration or you just worked out intensely and that's why because when you exercise that can break down certain proteins that can end up in the uh, urine. Also, it could be a kidney stone. Okay, that's protein. Then we have leukocytes. That would be white blood cells. That would be a sign of an infection. It could be a UTI. It could be a kidney stone. It could be some type of infection anywhere in the kidney or the bladder or the ureters. Number three, ketones. If you are on a low-carb diet, then ketones will show up. But let's say you're not on a low-carb diet and you have ketones. That would mean you have diabetes. Let's talk about glucose. If glucose shows up in your urine, that means that your blood sugars are over 180 milliliters per deciliter. So that would mean that you're a diabetic, okay? Number five, nitrites. Okay, there are certain bacteria that are involved with nitrites. So if there's nitrites, then that means that potentially there could be E. coli or gonorrhea or some other bacteria that is breaking down nitrates, okay? Which I don't, I'm not going to get into chemistry, but just realize that certain bacteria will, if they're thriving, increase this right here, okay? So if you have nitrites and leukocytes, that could indicate an infection. All right, what about blood? Well, that could be a UTI, a urinary tract infection. It could be that you had this intense exercise because think about it. What is a kidney? The kidney is a filter. It's like an oil filter. And if you're exercising, you're pushing all this blood through this filter, too much pressure, it could squeeze out some of these red blood cells that are not filtered and that can show up as blood. It could also be a kidney stone. So let's say, for example, um, you have a kidney stone and you go for a jog and there's jagged edges on that stone, and you're jogging up and down, it can tear the inside of the lining of the kidney and create um, blood. All right, what about seven, urobilinogen? What is that? That is the breakdown of bilirubin, okay, which bilirubin is a byproduct of the red blood cells when they're broken down. So if there's urobilinogen, that's more of an indication there's liver damage, it could potentially be cirrhosis, which is scar tissue of the liver. It could be inflammation of the liver. It could be any problem with the liver. Okay, that's urobilinogen. The pH. The pH normally should be slightly acidic. So if it's too acid, that could mean that you have too much uric acid and you're um, on your way to getting a uric acid stone. It could mean that you're consuming too much protein. And if it's too alkaline, that could also mean that your chemistry is off too. But uh, I remember in practice, um, seeing someone's pH being 9, which is like way, way too alkaline, and they were using one of those machines to alkalize the water, which is an unnatural process. So if your pH is too far one way versus the other, there's going to be some issues. Okay, number nine, specific gravity. What is that? That's really just the concentration of particles in your urine. It's how concentrated your urine is. And that could indicate uh, dehydration, okay? And of course, when you look at these values, it's going to give you the normal ranges, low or high. So you can actually get that data right on the little testing strip box when you buy these. All right, number 10, bilirubin. I already mentioned it's the breakdown of red blood cells. But if there's bilirubin in your urine, that could be an early sign of liver damage, okay? But it can also be a blocked bile duct where everything's backing up to the liver and it's spilling off into the blood. So it could be a problem with the gallbladder or the liver. So if there's bilirubin and urobilinogen, think liver. 
All right, so there you have it, the kind of the summary, the simple version of how to read urine strips. I don't have any recommendations of what brand to buy. You can do that research on your own and, and get some strips and, and check it out for yourself. Thanks for watching. Before you go real quick, I have a course entitled How to Bulletproof Your Immune System. It's a free course. I want you to take it, and here's why. Here's you. Here is your environment. Everyone is focused on this over here, avoiding your environment. But what about here? What about strengthening your immune system? That's what's missing. This course will show you how to bulletproof yourself. And so you can tolerate and resist your environment much better by strengthening your own immune system. I put a link down in the description right down below. Check it out and get signed up today. Hey, before